Okay, a quick video on <coughs> graphing exponential growth functions. Not a really difficult thing. Something to think about here is that we're working with this model right here. Um, for it to be growth, what causes the growth is that b will be greater than 1. So how will you know if you ex see exponential growth function? You see an exponential function. That is, an exponential function is a function that in its exponent has its variable there in the exponent. That's what makes it an exponential function. Uh, and if this value b, the one that's hooked to the uh, exponential variable has a value greater than 1, we have growth. And growth has a general shape, so let's talk about the general shape first. The general shape is kind of a simple one. It just looks like this. kind of starts out like that and just hooks up like this and continues to go up. So let's, let's graph one quickly and take a look at what that might look like. Um, so here's just the method I would use. So let's graph this. Let's graph f of x is equal to, I don't know, um, how about this? 3 times 2 to the power of x. All right? And make sure that this is 2 to the power of x up here, not 2x. <clears throat> and the way I would do this is this. Keeping in mind that we have this general shape, so I checked. I'm like, okay, so here we go, Charlie, that the b value is 2. 2 is greater than 1, so we have growth. So we're going to have this general shape here. And what I'm going to do is just set up a really quick t table here. And I'm going to set up x f of x. Remember, in this case, f of x is, the, is this function right here, right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple of negative numbers and some positive numbers. And I'm going to figure out what that would look like. So I'm going to take here, what I'm suggesting to you is I'm going to take f of negative 2, and f of negative 2 is, right, 3 times 2 to the power of negative 2, right? Power of negative 2. So here's our x values. Negative 2. Now, this is something is really, that really concerns me because I see this a lot. Remember, you can't multiply the 3 times the 2 before you do this, right? There's PEMDAS, right? PEMDAS. And PEMDAS is okay, we have to do our exponents before we do our multiplications. So please, take your time and consider this a little bit. It would not surprise me to see that somebody had got, said, well, why wouldn't you just do 3 times 2 and then you have 6 to the power of x? Well, try that and see if, if it, you get the same answers back. If you multiply the 3 times the 2 and then take it to this power, see if you get the same kind of numbers back. But I'm arguing with you that you will not. So please, don't do this. There's no multiplication before exponents, right? So I'm going to take the exponent first. So here's the 3. Here's another great part, uh, a great thing I can tell you right now. Maybe the best thing you're going to learn today if you don't know this. Negative exponents don't cause negative numbers. Negative exponents cause fractions. Uh, and I did a video on uh, on rules of exponents, and I proved that proved out why. And it, I think it will be really obvious to you. So if you go back and look at that video, it'd be a great explanation, I think, to you of, of why what I'm saying is true. But two to the negative two is the same as one over two to the positive two, otherwise known as one fourth. So the x value was negative two, so we have the point negative two, and this is one fourth. Three times one fourth is three fourths, isn't it? Okay, so there's our first point that we got. And we're going to take f of negative 1. It looks very similar. 3 times 2 to the exactly negative 1. We know we can't multiply these things together first, so we have 3 times 2 to the negative 1. We know that 2 to the negative 1, negative exponents cause fractions. Good. So it's 1 half. When we multiply that, we get 3 times 1 half is 3 halves. Remember, that's the y value. And the x value was negative 1, f of negative 1. So that's how I got that x value there. And it goes like that, doesn't it? Then we take our f of 0 is 3 times 2 to the 0 power. Now look, here's a great opportunity for us to prove that it wouldn't work. Be Ooh. You know what? I'm going to leave that alone because that, that wouldn't prove it. That would make me look bad. Forget I said that. Erase that part of the tape. Um, it would work, wouldn't it? Um, 2 to the 0 power is 1, right? Any number to the, zero, to the 0 power other than 0 is 1, and 3 times 1 is 3, so we get the point 0, 3. Now look back, and I checked my math again in my head to see. We were arguing about what if you multiply these together first. What if you did 3 times 2 and got 6? Well, 6 to the 0 power is 1, not 3, so it wouldn't have worked as well, would it? Okay, good. So let's take f of 2 really quickly, and that's 3 times 2. 2 squared, and we know 2 squared is 4, 
So that gives us the point 2. This is 2 squared is 4. 3 times 4 is 12, right? So this is this to look at. And then all we have to do is graph this thing. So here's our Cartesian plane, Rene Descartes. So here's our Cartesian plane. We know what the general shape is, and we're going to apply it in just a second. But first, let's put our points in. Uh, put in the point 0, 3. So maybe that's 0, 3 right here, if you don't mind. Um, uh, didn't I do 1? Hey, I didn't do 1. Sorry. So I don't have to do that. I don't have to do that. That's fine. It'll work. 2, 12. So there's 1, 2, 2, 12, maybe. Should have done that other point. 12, 0, 3. But it's okay, because we know what the general shape is, right? Uh, negative 1, 3 halves. So here's negative 1, maybe 3 halves, maybe here. Um, so that's negative 1, 3 halves. I'm not pretending that the scale is perfect. And negative 2, 3 fourths, right? Negative, that's 3 fourths. And then I'm going to apply my general shape here, and the general shape is this one, isn't it? The general shape is this shape, isn't it? It kind of looks like this. It doesn't have those squiggly things in it. But I got my general shape. I knew it was going to be this shape, and it is pretty much this shape. This thing could be hooked up more. It's going to actually climb a lot sharper here. It's going to really start to make its ascent. So, okay. So, let's review quickly. Exponential growth. F of x equals a times b to the power of x. How do we know it's exponential growth? By looking at it, we know by looking at the function, if the b value is greater than 1, we have growth, right? Why is that true? Because 1 is 100%, so we need more than 100% to have growth, don't we? Okay. Uh, what did we do? Uh, we took into consideration that we know what the general shape of the curve is always going to be. It's going to be this shape right here, isn't it? From there, we went and we made a t-table. So make a table. Make sure you put in negative and positive values. Take your time, right? Find some, find some points, plug in the points, right? Plug in the points and then, a, then overlap your general shape to that and it should lay over there pretty well. Last thing I wanna remind you, we are at seven minutes and 18 seconds. So let me remind you that you cannot multiply this A and B value before you satisfy the exponents, right? Or it won't work out. Okay, you guys. Great work, great work, great work. Let me see if I can turn this thing off.